Okay, welcome back to this next video. It's been a while. I do apologize for my late updates on videos and things, but got a new computer, done a lot of work, and been a little bit busy. So today we're going to look at actually creating a game. It's not going to be much of a game. Obviously, you can put your own game parts in. But we're actually going to make something that is actually using a server to have high scores. So. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make a new replica. Now, instead of our normal P5JS, we're going to make a Node.js. I'm going to call it High Scores. Call it what you want, it doesn't really matter. And then, because it's a little bit different to what we normally have, we don't have things built in already, so we've got a few things we need to do. So, what I'm going to do is I'm relying on already having a database. I will show you that later on. Um, but essentially, we need to add a few things in. So, we're going to make a variable, we're going to do a constant. So, const. I'm just going to call it SQLite3 equals require. This is a new thing we haven't used before. And then just in here, I'm going to put in SQLite3 like that. Now, all that's going to do is the server, when we run it, is going to install SQLite. So that's SQL server, the light version, essentially. Then I'm going to have const DB for database equals a new SQLite3 dot database and we're going to use one that's called high scores dot db uh, and I'll go into that one in a moment and then next thing we're going to do is use that's 10 through 10 they are so complete off because it's very annoying uh, we're going to make another thing called um let x mm, that's a type if that makes sense let express equals require express so that's an, another library that's going to get installed that allows us to host on our program can we turn this off I swear I just clicked to turn off there we go let's get rid of that it's very annoying and then we're going to use another library so we've got var socket equals require and then socket.io so socket .io now what this allows us to do it allows us to connect to our program, it allows us to host an app, and it allows us to use SQL Server, or SQL. Um, so now, what we're going to do is we're going to tell Express to actually launch our app. We're going to have it in a separate file. So we're going to say app, oops, we're going to say, um, probably keep that as let. So I'm going to say let app, Equals express this initializes the library gets it so we can use it then we're going to do app dot use and then express dot static and then we're going to look for a folder that's called public so in public that's where we're going to have all of our bits we need to make a new folder so I'm going to new folder I'm going to call that public that's where our p5 game is going to go that will work Public, so we'll add that in a bit, and then we're going to set up our server. So we're going to say let server equals app dot listen, and then we're going to give it a port. So we'll say three thousand, and we're going to run a function. So when that happens, all we're going to do is just do a console.log server is running. Now what I've also got that I'm going to need to put onto our computer is this right here, which is highscores.db. And I'm going to go through that database later on, but essentially it just has an ID, name, and a value. And that is our database. So it's just going to not have very much in it, but it's just going to be able to allow us to put in a score and put in a name. Okay. So if we run that, it's going to do a bunch of things because it has to do lots of installing to install all these libraries for us. So it's going to do that for us now. It takes a little bit of time but it's going to install all those requires for us, which is what we need. So it'll do that in a moment. So whilst we're waiting for that to do something, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start using IO. So I'm going to do let IO equals socket server, and then IO.on is going to, as soon as it receives a connection, which we're going to use in the other program, it's going to call a function called connected. Okay, now all that does is it's going to call this function that we're going to have to do. Connected. 
Um, it's got some sort of error on line 11, but I think that's because I ran it a bit early. Um, sometimes I've replicated it a bit slow lately and you have to run your thing a couple of times, so we'll get to that in a second. So we're going to pass in a socket, which is a person or the computer that's connected. And then we're just going to do a little console.log and say that socket dot id plus you don't need any of this code here these console logs they don't do anything at the moment let's just see if that is in letters so it says our server's running so that's good now it's saying cannot get slash that's because it's trying to run something at the moment that doesn't exist okay so this cell connection so we're going to leave that for now so what we're going to have to do in here is add a file which is an index.html now all you can do here is I'm going to add all the stuff we normally would have. So we can just do HTML. So this is going to be exactly the same as any other P5 project. So you can actually just copy in your code from another game that you want to add high scores into. So I'm going to add in all of my um, P5 bits. Just bear with me. So I'm just going to copy them from another project. And then what I'm also going to do is adding a connection to socket.io which is there and there's our p5 play stuff so there's all of our bits to do much but there we are then just need to add in our body and our script as normal and then add our script in so that's our thing there and just do a slash script for this one so the colors look nice and then we're going to add another one i'm just going to call that script dot javascript so we've got our script.js and we'll just very quickly get that set up. So we need a function setup in there. Just like normal, create as a nice little thing. And then function draw, just like that. Now what should happen, might take a few minutes, is it should run. Oh, that's so I changed that background to zero, so it's black. It's showing our canvas, so that's our game working. The Express Library is now running that public folder for us. It's launching our game, um, and the server's running, so that's really good. So we're going to go back into our index and carry on with our connected function. That's where we're going to throw in some SQL. So we're going to say let SQL equals select. Now I'm not necessarily doing parameter SQL. I'm not necessarily doing good SQL stuff. I'm literally just getting it to work. Okay, so you can obviously make it a lot more. Um, hacker proof things like that if you wish to so I'm gonna get all the scores by the score which is a part of my database and I go into sending orders I'm gonna do the top ones first and that is gonna be our rescue app then what we're going to do is we're gonna pass in a DB dot all so it's gonna pass the CP at uh, the SQL SQL and then we're gonna do another throwaway function that's gonna pass in two parameters which is um, the data which is in rows and then error which is the any errors so if there is an error we'll just console.log the error otherwise what we're going to do is we're going to get any of our bits so you might want to see what's actually happening in the database so I can do console.log rows and that's going to send as uh, show us all the all the um, things that have come from that function. So um, if we run that, provided that it all works, we've got a lot of these errors that we need to get rid of. Let's just get rid of all that rubbish. So then, at the moment, this isn't running because nothing has connected to it yet. So we can't do much with it just yet. So we'll finish this off and then we'll go and get it working in the other one. So we're just gonna do send data. We're gonna make a record or an object um, name and then it's going to be rows.name and then score is going to be row.score it needs to be a common or semicolon okay so that's going to get our scores put it into a little um, object for us to send and then we can just do socket.emit and then we're going to give it a name so when we the other program receives something called send scores it's going to send I think for now we're just send all the rows um, 
We don't necessarily need this. I think I had some trouble with sending an object. So we're just going to send the rows for now and see if we get that working later on. So that's that. And then what we need to do now is make it so if we receive some data from our thingamajig, our, um, if our server receives some data, we're going to, so if it, if it, serves, if it gets a request to our server called scores, so we can do socket dot on. If you can receive something called scores, it's going to run another function. We're going to make so a function. It's going to have get some data that's going to get sent from this from the um, application, and then we're going to have a function called insert high scores, and then data. So whatever we send from the app from the game, it's going to insert those, and then all we have to do is make a function called insert high score. That's going to receive some data, and then do some more SQL. So let SQL equals insert into scores name and score, and the values are going to be. This way it gets a little bit awkward because we need to get our speech marks right. And we're going to do data dot name plus like that. A little quotes. Put the quotes around it for the SQL, and then. We're going to need to have in data.name, comma, and then plus data.score. And then after that, we're going to have to have a closing bracket and a closing semicolon for the SQL to work. And then exactly the same as before. So db.all SQL, then function. Error and rows again, because we want to see the rows that are being entered properly. And then we're just going to do if there's an error, console.log that error. Scroll down a little bit for you. Otherwise, we'll just do, we don't need to receive the data from that, so we just say console.log success. So that's going to insert data and it's going to. Um, select data and send it to our our client. So now in our script, we need to add in some bits and bobs. So we need to also use socket in here. So we do let socket equals io.connect. So we've already done it to know connection in the HTML. So that's fine. And then we should add some variables. I've got let started equals false. That's just, this is just for my game. Let playing equals false. Let timer equals zero. I'll explain this in a moment. And then we want an interval timer. So all our game is going to do is simply run down a timer, add up some scores, and then send that score off randomly. But obviously you can have it so when you finish your game, it sends it, it'll work exactly the same. So we've got our setup function. Now we're going to use IO again. So we're going to use socket.on. So this is if we get Ascend scores. As I said, this isn't perfect. It's just going to receive it at the start of the program, and it's going to call something called get high score. So we can go ahead and make that. So function get high score, and that's going to receive some data. And then what we're going to do is retrieve that data, which is simply going to be a for loop. So for let i equals zero, i is less than data dot length i plus plus and then all we're going to do is do some stuff so we can see everything so we're going to set the background to zero we're going to do a fill which will just make it red 255 zero zero text size 30 and then let's make our text a display so let text Display, we'll call it equals data i dot name plus a colon. Just spread it out a bit. This would be a high scoreboard plus data i dot score, and then you probably could display it straight away, but I had a few difficulties um, getting it to display properly. So we're just gonna add it to an array, and that's what we'll display later on. Okay, so to actually now see that, 
we need a function that actually goes ahead and draws our scores. So function, we're going to call it draw scores. And it's just going to make sure it's all filled in again. Just we might have some clears in. So I'll just make sure. Shouldn't really matter for text size, but it doesn't hurt to reset the text size. And then if high scores dot length is greater than zero, so I actually have some high scores to actually put on the screen. Um, that's high score, isn't it? And I'm just going to do another for loop. So I'm just going to nick this one here. So that's going to be high score at length. Just like that. And then all we're going to do is just draw some text. So text high score i. And then I'm just going to draw it in the middle. So width divided by 2, height divided by 2, plus. I'm just going to do i times 30 just to space it out automatically so I don't have to do anything. And then what else am I going to need to do? I need to send some high scores. So I'm going to do function send, which is going to send us some high scores. So all it's going to do is take in two parameters, which is going to be name and score, because that's all we need. And then I'm just going to do data equals, we're going to pass an object again. So I'll do name equals name score is score and then I'm just going to send that back using the socket.emit again and there's loads of different ways to do it this is just one way I've done it but you can do it your own way if you, if you found a better way that's going to send that and then all I need to do now is make the game actually work so I'm just going to do oh, background zero and I'm going to say if the game is playing I'm going to make sure I fill my text in make that white and then text I'm going to put in that timer I made so timer and then I'll put that to 100 and 100 just so it's somewhere we can see it and then we're going to say if the timer equals equals 10 so once we get to 10 seconds I hope it's going to work we're just going to send and then I'm going to put in a name and then I'm just going to do a random score so I'll just do random out of 100 Now I'm going to do, in the setup, I'm going to add in, so in my game start function, sorry, so I'm just going to very quickly do function game start, I'm just going to do started equals true, interval timer equals set interval, and then that's just going to do a little function for us, I'll just do it in here, a little callback function um, there for us. It's going to add one to the timer and then I just need to close that and then say how much I'm doing it for and then I just need to get that working and then started equals false. So I've got an error so let's just check what I've done, check my brackets are right. So I've got set interval there, and then I have got a random bracket there I don't need. So hopefully, let's just put that onto a new line so we can see it all. So timer plus equals one. That was in there, and then started equals false and then what we're going to do is when we get to that 10 seconds we're going to clear interval and then that interval is going to be that interval timer we made that's going to get cleared we're going to say playing equals false and then otherwise if I'm not playing I'm going to say if kb dot presses space We'll set playing to true. We'll call that game start function. And then the very last thing we do in the draw is just draw scores. So we've got our game start function. We've got a draw function. 
we've got send, we've got get high scores, and we've got draw scores. So we've got lots of stuff in there. Now, I've not even checked if any of this works just yet. So this could be the moment of truth. Okay, so that showed our high scores. So I've got some random data in there. So I've got someone called Reese, someone called Will. And then if I press space, it's going to count one, two, three, four, five, and so on until it gets to 10. Then what it's going to do is stop. So what's next? We've got an SQ light error. So it's probably got freaked out by some of my SQL. I might have made a mistake in there. So we can just go ahead and check that. Um, so let's just check our insert. It looks like it's where it's broken. I've already got it pre-written, so hopefully that's that there. And then we'll just check that the first SQL is correct as well. But it won't be one of my videos if something didn't break first time. So let's try again. Let's we'll ignore these errors here. Someone's connected. We've got those bits. We press space. Should count to 10. And then it should, theoretically, insert some data for us. So we run it again. We'll be able to see if that high score has been on there. So it says success, that's wet. So if I just run this again, obviously I've not had it so you can keep requesting things. So TechEd got 60 and he's second in the highest scores. So that's wet. Okay, so what I will do as well is I'll put all this code uh, separately at the end of the video. But that is setting up a very basic server that's going to send and receive high score data. Now, this isn't the perfect way of doing it. I'm sure there's lots of bits of code that we can get rid of, like this, for example, can go. A lot of these console.logs can go now. If you don't care who's connected, that can neaten that up a little bit. Don't need to say success necessarily. Probably get rid of that. Um, and you can even get rid of the server is running. Doesn't need to do anything either. So, yeah. So all you need to do in your actual game, once it's in here, is think about your logic. But when the game ends, you want to send your data. When you want to see the high scores on the high score page or something, you can go ahead and throw that in. Now, the only thing I haven't shown you is this high scores dot database. So I'll show you that now.